the trouble with old steam locomotives. This is part four of the series, what to do about the very rusty cylinder. Sometimes these jobs can be fairly simple, you can take the buffer beam off and even rebore the cylinder, but not in this case because the buffer beam is all welded to the frames. So what can I do to clean up this cylinder and make it all shiny again? One way to do it, my way to do it in this case, is to use one of these. This is a cylinder horn. It's a very cheap and cheerful gadget, comprising of three carborundum stones, spring-loaded, that will clean the inside of cylinders. And the good thing is, there's also a spring on the main drive shaft, so you can drive it in straight and parallel, but at an angle. I'm driving the cylinder horn with a very small Bosch electric drill, and it's going at just the right speed, and it's scraping through the rust. However, it's not a good idea to do it dry, because this just clogs up the stones. What you need to do is apply some oil. I've applied some standard lubricating oil, and as you can see, it's all running out of each end of the cylinder, and the oil is very black and dirty because it contains the rust from the internal walls of the cylinder itself. This oil is very black and dirty, and at the moment it's dripping out of the drain cocks. After I uploaded the last video, all about getting the speedy locomotive to work, a viewer wrote in and asked me how come only one piston and valve was seized in the cylinder. And the reason was... What I should say now is you'll have to watch the next episode, but no, the reason was because both of the drain cocks at that side of the engine on that particular cylinder appear to be blocked up. In the next video where I feature the speedy, by making a new front cylinder gasket and refitting the front cylinder cover, I will show how I unblock the drain cocks. These small cylinder drain cocks underneath the cylinders can be problematic. Usually though it's because the drain cocks leak very badly and dribble oil and water on the track. And normally when starting an engine any blockage in the drain cock is blown out by the pressure. But in the case of the Speedy something must have gone in there and blocked them up because both of them seem to be blocked. The other side are okay. I notice some drops of oil from the other side. This honing process takes quite a while because this cylinder is in very bad condition. But I'm not just honing away wildly and relentlessly. Periodically I clean out the dirty oil from the cylinder and replenish it with some clean oil. Here I'm using a cloth which I push through the cylinder with a ruler. And the reason I use a ruler is because if I use my finger, I may cut my finger. Look, it's quite sharp on the edge of these cylinders. And by the look of the cylinder from this end, it needs some more honing yet. Here's a different angle. It's very important not to push the hone all the way through. The stones need to finish at each end of the cylinder. Here, for the purpose of the video only, I'm pushing the horn too far through. And if I carry on doing this for a prolonged period, the front part of the cylinder bore will become bell-mouthed. Make sure you keep the stones in the cylinder. This really is not a wondrous piece of engineering, and to the experts I do apologise, but it's doing the job. As I said earlier, everything about this horn thing is spring-loaded. So it's doing its job quite well. Time for another clean I think, and now as you can see at one end of the cylinder it's looking a little bit shiny. This time I'm going to pull the cloth through several times to get rid of any residue in there, then replenish the oil and give it another go, or two, or maybe three. I need to get a good finish on the cylinder bore without hopefully removing too much metal. The piston rings that I'll be fitting to the cylinder are exactly one and a half inches in diameter. The piston's a bit smaller, but the cylinder, even after it's been cleaned with the horn, is only three thou under size. And for an engine in this state, that should be quite good, really. Time now to use the edge of my ruler to scrape off the old gasket from the rear of the cylinder. At least this engine isn't held together with silicone rubber. I'll be making a new gasket for here anyway. Temporarily, I've just fitted the rear cylinder cover with the piston attached, and once the piston rings are fitted and it's all bolted back together, it should work quite well. This engine has quite an interesting feature, the drain cocks are manually operated, and I don't mean from a lever in the cab. With this engine, you have to get off the riding truck, walk up to the front of the engine, open the drain cocks, and then, once the cylinders are warm, stop the engine, get off the driving truck again and close them. And then you're able to drive the engine without getting a shower bath from the exhaust and the steam oil and the soot from the chimney. 
I don't see any operating mechanism underneath the cylinders, so this must be a feature of the model. I'll have a closer look and see how difficult a job it would be to make an operating system so you can move this lever from the cab, and of course the one at the other side. At the moment though, my brief is to make this engine go, because the owner doesn't really want it, he wants to sell it, and there's enough to do at it without fitting drain cock levers. That's it for this episode, I'm now awaiting the arrival of the piston rings at Blackgate's engineering. But on this engine, there are plenty of other jobs to get on with in the meantime. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.